Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back. Clumsy flying. Something very different today. Something a bit early access. Thank you for joining. We're flying the Piper Arrow 3 from Just Light. Not yet released. But thanks to the guys at Just Light for the opportunity. So let me try this out a bit in advance. Iberia Flight Sim. UK Flight Sim today. How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining, guys. How are you? <clears throat> Scotsman nailed it this time. First ever. Real first this time. I see you made a new friend in Discord. How's that going for you? <laughs> I just scanned through the, the discussions a bit. <laughs> Uh, interesting stuff. <laughs> APDX Piper Arrow, yes. To be honest, I'm not very familiar with the Piper Arrow. I've never flown it in the sim in any other sim before. But I've heard very good things about it and I've been reading through the manual. I'll show you later more details on what this mod includes. Now this mod is still very much, it's still work in progress. Not This is not yet the final build. Uh, I think there are some more modifications happening in the engine sounds and other aspects of the plane but it should be close enough to release so we should be flying the almost full thing here we'll see but we'll test it out together and we'll go through it together <clears throat> hey Patrick glad you made it were you in Jack's stream so you couldn't drop by I was working I had to work before I streamed very busy at work today there he is. Yes. <laughs> New friend left. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Yikes. So thanks for joining, guys. Richard, welcome back. Glad you made it. He is hunting. Ah, nice. Hope he finds those uh, those uh, animals he's looking for. Or maybe not. Nice Canadian registration. Yeah, good catch. This plane has a lot of different liveries. I think this is the default Golf Bravo Golf Kilo Uniform. I think this is actually a real plane, this tail number. Maybe all of these are real, real planes, but the manual was saying the interior, you'll see the interior. Actually, we can probably see that here. If we look at the interior of this plane, you'll see that it's a bit worn out. Maybe that's an understatement. Look at, look at the yoke here. But yeah, what they're saying is that the wear and tear we see here in the cockpit is actually how it looks in the real plane. In this real plane in the in this with this tail number. What is that? Uh, yeah, the Golf Bravo Golf uh, Kilo Uniform tail number. So they really modeled it after a real plane and <laughs> including the, all the wear and tear. But for those who don't like the wear and tear, they actually have a like a perfect a mint condition cockpit as well so you just have to modify some files it's, it's included in the package so you can like copy those textures paste them into the aircraft directory so that you have a mint condition texture without the wear and tear but i mean me personally i do like this wear and tear kind of look makes it much more real so for us we'll be sticking with this one for now we'll see if it change later on okay but for now we'll keep it but yeah so you can see the, the cockpit is as classic as it gets. And we do have an electronic flight board in there. Flight bag, EFB. But we can turn that off later, make it a bit more authentic. There's not even a Garmin in here, although there is an option for it. Uh, like a, a more modern Garmin navigation system. Looks like it has windows, has doors you can open, you can latch. And everything else looks pretty amazing so far. So we'll go and check it out and we'll continue our UK tour. I think it's going to be perfect for this. So we'll uh, continue our IFR, I follow, I follow roads in the UK, exploring the the rest of the UK using the Sky Park tour. Remember last time we ended up in Glasgow. So we're making our way southwest now down to this one. I'm not sure what the airport that is, but we'll see that in a bit. So let's load things up and we'll see where we get to. 
So that's the Piper Arrow. I am going to change the livery though because I, of course me being a blue and white kind of guy, I'm going to be picking that one. One thing I noticed though, it doesn't show the tail number, at least not for this livery. Maybe that's a feature on this plane. Because I wanted to make the G clumsy appear, but I couldn't in this livery. Maybe let's try a, a, a different one and maybe it works. Maybe that's indicative of this one not uh, depending on the image you see here. The tail number is not showing here. This one it's showing there. Maybe, maybe. So we'll try maybe this one. Or that one looks good, looks classic. Uh, a blue and red kind of thing here, yeah, this one. Let's see if that works. Okay, weight and balance. So same with real life stuff. I've been reading through the manual, it's super detailed. It, I, I love reading through the details in there. It's just going to take a lot of time though, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Yes, probably when I'm not streaming, I can read through it for leisure. But there's a lot of flavor text in there, even a bit of history. Hey, super glad you made it, man. We're checking out a new plane today. That where is fun to see. Hey, Bunky, how are you? Yes, something I'm really looking forward to. I have two planes I'm looking forward to. This one, the Piper Arrow and the CRJ from Airsoft. Both of them I reached out to and both of them I got. So uh, we will be checking out the CRJ as well when it releases on the 16th of March. But for now, we stick to GA. We go old school and we mostly do VFR flights. We'll see. Exactly, PDX. Same with me, same with me. Those are the two planes I'm super hyped about. And this one at least we have already. So yeah, it looks like this also doesn't work uh, in terms of the tail number. Because I, I put in G clumsy, it doesn't seem like it's working. So probably custom tail numbers are not supported. If that will change in the final release, we will see. But for now, not there. I am noticing a lot more details though. You can see the chocks here uh, tie downs are existing and if we oh what's that sound <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> instrument views oh i love look at that look at how <laughs> this is almost unreadable now we're in there for the win i love that attention to detail Oh, I think I know what that sound is about. It might be my rudder or the throttle. Yeah, it's the noise from the throttle. You can see because of my noisy yoke, you can see they're vibrating just a tad there. So if you put them to the down position, they kind of shake all over. Might have to introduce like a dead zone or something to prevent that from happening. For now though, let's just include that as part of the package, the immersion. Let's open the door. I think there are two locks in here. Latch there, latch here, and then open it up. Uh, creaky sounds, I love it. Open the window as well, unlock, and then open. Beautiful. Mouse running loose, <laughs> that's the one. When you move the rudders, you actually hear it stopping somewhere. You hear that metal clank. That one. Or this one. <laughs> CRJ videos definitely will be having those as well. Definitely. How do you even start this thing? Held together by Bubblegum and JV Weld. <laughs> it has been through a lot, hasn't it? So, the EFB. Let's go and explore that a bit. You can see the chocks and tie downs that are there. You can, you can turn them off so that they disappear from here as well. Pretty cool stuff. So that works. You can also open or close the baggage door and the oil door. You can hear them opening. And here you can see they are open now. The baggage door and the oil door in there. There's even a refill oil kind of thing for the maintenance. Should I need to change that? I guess I don't need to. You can recharge the battery. You can have warnings. What is this enabled kind of thing? Maybe that shows the wear and tear. Maybe that runs out. I don't know. You can even include a co-pilot if you like. 
<laughs> it's going to be a bit cramped in here though. So that guy will be present both in the interior and exterior. And I think that guy can be changed based on the settings in the general uh, section. So if we co can customize the look. But no, I don't like that. Let's go solo flight here. State saving. HSI enabled. You can even change the GPS system. So if you are a fan of the GNS430 or the GNS530, so it's a bit more familiar. But if you really want to go old school, then that one would be as old school as it gets. We'll go with that one. And then you can have different aircraft states. So you can jump in, cold and dark, ready for start or ready for takeoff. But I'd, I'd want a cold and dark setup here, so we'll see. You even have information on the kinds of... Uh, uh, the, the weather outside. So if you go to live weather here, I actually didn't check how Glasgow looks like in real life. Um, is it this one? Is it working? Can't wait to fly with the doors open. <laughs> yes, exactly. Let me move the throttles a bit just to lessen that noise. Okay, I think that's it. Is it live weather working at all? I guess so. That's... Unless I got the bug. Maybe. It sure looks like it because it's changing. Yeah, maybe. Okay, cool. Alright, so let me give you a look of the manual here. That's the manual. Very nice. Piper Arrow 3. So all the different details. There are two types of manuals. One is the operations manual and one is the operating data manual. So the operations manual contains all the different details on the plane. And the operating data manual contains the performance numbers more like the charts, the... Uh, yeah, different performance numbers, so it's as detailed as it can get. And I am assuming that it is the aircraft performance when we fly it will be pretty accurate to the charts there. <clears throat> so we, we can check that later. So yes, a lot of details in here. So you can see a little bit of history as well. Started with the Piper Cherokee became the Cherokee Arrow, and then the Arrow 2, and finally the Arrow 3, which is this one. So this is already state-of-the-art, 1977. Over 6,000 PA-28Rs have been built, and the Arrow 3 continues to be flown all around the world. Yeah, it's a great training plane from what I have read. So the livery that we're using is actually, I think, this one. Yeah, in the UK. Uh, is it the Tebs one or the Tusga? The Tuska is what we have. Cool. It even includes so all the details in here. And in addition, so yeah, you can see that kind of airframe it has, fuel system, electrical system, so very, very detailed. And you have all the uh, different uh, V speeds and the different guides on what each of the panel does. So it is as detailed as, an, as a manual can get. And it also has, which is something I am looking forward to, something I need, is the actual tutorial. So if you want to fly the arrow, you can actually load the flight. It says load, save, and then there's a tutorial flight with it. Interesting. I haven't actually tried that, but we'll try it from here. Yeah, the price actually, I'm not sure yet. They haven't uh, given any uh, details about that, but I'll let you know when they come back to me. Yeah. So far, there's been no info on that yet. All right, so open the doors and uh, you can hide the yoke. Magneto is set to off. Landing gear is down. Parking brake is on. I'll check that here in the background and I'll move here instead. So maybe let's use the mouse for now so it's better. So that's the parking brake. Is that set or not? Set parking brake. So that's the one that's set. Good. <clears throat> Idle cut off. Good. Oh, it's starting to <laughs> really shake now though. Let's hide the yoke for now. 
turn on the battery, which is this one. The sounds are very nice. You can actually hear something spooling up. Remove that from zero. There you go. Fuel quantity gauge is this one. 50% on both. 20 gallons each side, I think. Yeah, this is the left tank. That's the right tank. Landing gear, all three greens illuminated. Switch on the navigation, rotating beacon, anti-collision, and landing lights. So switch on the nav lights, which is... Which one is it? <laughs> the, the beacon and anti-collision light is that one, right? Anti-collision lights, that one. Landing lights, that one. And is this the nav one? This one, maybe? Oh, those are panel lights. Oh, we'll see that later. Oh, this is the nav light. So put that down here, I guess. Something like that. Based on the diagram. Ada! Yeah, the sounds are great. Welcome back. Yeah, perfect name. Back again. Too much ETS2. <laughs> Which sound mod are you using? The the one from... Uh, the one you, you won? Welcome back, man. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Right. Confirm that the lights are illuminated. Yes, we do see... The nav lights are lit up there. Actually, let me try that. So if I turn it off like so. Yeah, the nav lights are off. If I do that, then the nav lights go on. And one more. What does one more do? I'm not sure what else that does. Maybe it's just the intensity. I don't know. Oh, wow. It actually can go quite a bit. Okay, let's just flick it once then. Maybe that's good enough. Good. <clears throat> Alright. Confirm that all annunciator lights and the low voltage light are illuminated. So it's these guys. Love going through the details like this. And then switch off the battery master. Okay. Cool. And then it, they say, check the yoke, check the that movement, it's free and correct. Looks good there, even from the exterior. Yar, Jack, how was hunting? Sorry, couldn't drop by. Yes, still doing the Tour of Britain, starting off in Glasgow this time. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Let's resume that. We'll make our way towards Eagles, Echo Golf Uniform, Zulu, Castle Kennedy Airfield. Now the question is, how the heck do we navigate there? I also need to log into Bush Talk Radio. If we ever get to fly, that is, that might be. Maybe we have to take it one step at a time. <clears throat> Let's see how that works. Okay, that's connected. Good. And let me open a separate window here. So we can log into Bush Talk Radio. <clears throat> okay, we are connected. Good. On with the manual. Move the elevator and rudder trims to the center and neutral position. Where are those? Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel and feel free to join chat. We're exploring the Piper Arrow 3 by Just Flight. 
for the first time together. Trims I expect should be somewhere within arm's reach. The trim wheel. I can't quite see. Oh, there it is. There it is. So there should be a level here. That's the one. So move it to the neutral position. There you go. There's also a rudder trim apparently. Where is it? Huh. I'm not sure. But let's leave that for now. Visual inspection. Uh, 8 quarts for oil. Starting the engine. There we go. Okay. We will start the engine before configuring the avionics for our departure. Yeah, that makes sense. Close, close the baggage door using the EFB. That's this guy right here. So you can close the baggage door. <clears throat> then close the passenger door by pulling it and latching it down. Locking it up like so. Perfect. Good. Parking brake is set and that the circuit breakers are all in that would be right here all of them are in nothing is popped out on the left side wall right click on the fuel selector and make sure that it is on the left position yeah it's left right now here that's right that's left okay good on the throttle quadrant move the propeller lever to the full forward position and advance the throttle to to approximately one fourth open okay so full forward on the propeller and the uh, throttle would be one fourth around this point confirm that the alternate air is closed this guy right here and that all avionics are off Man, oh my goodness this is very old school so this is the avionics right and each of them i think have an, their own switch uh, i think this one ah that one so do I have to make sure that they're all off like so? It says all off. Yeah. So each of them have a switch. <laughs> it's not like one switch for all avionics. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's switch on the battery again. Uh, if I can get to it, that is. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Feel free to join the chat there. Turn on the batteries and start hearing that spooling up thing again. Floor looks like the inside of your truck. Yeah, the, the wear and tear is amazing. For those who, who hate the wear and tear, they have an alternate set of textures you can enable. But for me personally, I like this one. <laughs> Makes us look like a pro. So navigation and rotating beacons. Okay. So let's open that. It's a bit hard though with the propeller in the way. It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? Turn that on. Rotating beacon lights on. Switch on the fuel pump and then move the mixture lever to the full reach until the fuel flow is displayed. So the fuel pump is that one. And once we push on the mixture, you can see this changing in here. Are we are we drowning out the engine this way though? I hope not. So we can see it move, the fuel flow based on your mixture lever good and then we can then start the engine okay that looks good so what we can do is start it up right here there we go all right Looking good, shaking all over. So from here we can turn on the alternator so that the batteries will get charged. Something changing when I turn that on and off. Yeah, the ammeter is changing. So you can see the battery charging up. Adjust the throttle to maintain 1400 to 1500 RPM. So let's lessen that. Like so. Can I turn off the fuel pump already? I hope I can because it's noisy. <laughs> we can now switch on the avionics. Okay. Whew. Turn on everything basically. Turn on the avionics now. I'll get back to chat in a bit, guys. 
give me a second to turn on our funky state-of-the-art avionics here. Okay. How do you even turn this on? Let's go to altitude reporting immediately just so I can let go of that. How do you open this one? Uh, on. There you go. Oh wow, old school! <laughs> Love it! Oh, this is nice. Okay. Got a new phone, congrats! The booth textures. Was it super high res 4K? The red interior. That P28 had the same interior. Wow. A remix. Glad you made it to the stream. Yeah. They say the textures are based from a real plane as well. The original livery that they have for this plane. They copy the textures including the wear and tear on that actual plane. Alright. Switched off. Everything is on I think. Rotate the fuel selector switch to the right and then the left. Checking that the engine operates correctly on both tanks before selecting the fullest tank. Okay. So we just switch this to left. <laughs> Might have cut off the fuel for a second there, but we're back. Left, right. Okay, both of them work great. All right, configure the avionics. Um, all right, in configuring the avionics, we might need something. The help of little Mav map here. Have a good night, da. Welcome back to your name, to your official name. Okay. Let's restart this one. That's a different flight altogether. Where am I? In the UK, Glasgow. We're going to make our way towards uh, Eagles. Echo Golf Uniform Zulu. Yeah, it looks like the weather in Glasgow is supposedly pretty bad. You can see it's IFR here. Uh, as usual, overcast at 600 feet. <laughs> So yes, not going with live weather today at all. Not going with live weather. So that's the one we are going to. And that's going to be a 201 degree course direct to the destination airport. 201, okay, 201. So let's put the course there. Let's change the course in here. Make it 201. Oh, that's gonna take a while. There you go. 21. That's 200. 201. Okay, good. Yar, blah. How's it going? <clears throat> good morning, Forbin. Thanks for joining. Sorry for the slow start, guys. Bear with me a bit one, until we get used to the plane. Make a turn. Okay, this is just highlighting the a few different steps. Moments later. <laughs> yes, that's the perfect one. He led the duo is back together again. Led and blah, both in the stream. That doesn't happen often. Remote position, the DME selector. What I like about this plane as well is the instrument views are very nicely done. If you're going to plug in something, this is very nice actually clearly see all of them okay so let's put that to go there I'm thinking what we should be plugging in one sec huh should be a different system in here oh that one remote yes I think this one we need to on as well there you go Nav 1, Nav 2, Cabin Heat Control, oh interesting, this one is, <coughs> okay, so <laughs> I was looking for it, so this is Nav 1, but if you look here, it's Nav Blank. So apparently it's been 
erased so someone i think just like drew a two here by hand <laughs> so i guess that's nav two right <laughs> close enough we can we can take that we can take that yeah the me is nav one so whatever we put in the nav one in here the view art the dme will reflect in this panel because we put this under remote okay interesting yeah just light spiper arrow we haven't started yet i'm still fumbling about Glad you made it to the stream, though. Hey, officer, how are you? To a barrel roll. Four hours today with no power. Goodness. But it's back now, thankfully. <clears throat> okay, looks good. How can we plug in the, the GPS? Yeah, I, I have no idea how to plug this in, guys. Uh, can we just say go to go to echo <laughs> is it not that easy oh my goodness this is old school shall we root maybe root so uh, echo okay how the heck do you even type here maybe I should have studied this beforehand set not very intuitive is it Root. Enter. No, I have to study this first. No messages, okay. Waypoint nav. No, I, I'm sure I can do something here. I just have to figure out how to type in the darn thing. Just click anything and hope something works. Maybe if I hold it. No? Okay, let's read it later. Okay. So for now, we rely on little nav map to navigate. Taxi to the runway. Clear of obstacles, then release the parking brake. Alright. So we have some run-up checks there which we can s uh, skip. Throttle lever to obtain 2000 RPM. Now we're good there. Wow, this is very detailed. Goodness. All the run-up checks you can do is in there. Flaps 10. switch on the pito heat switch okay so live weather isn't working so let's go with a few clouds for now maybe or scattered so it's scenic scattered looks pretty good i can live with that <clears throat> cockpit needs some cleaning i know right yeah nice wear and tear in there hey bow bow glad you made it Thanks guys, sorry for the delayed reaction, trying to read up and uh, learn this plane on the fly. So we have, yeah, I think that looks good. So far, nothing really that's too, so different. Um, oh, panel lighting, I like that. Yes, let's put in some panel lights. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Programmer car stereo. Yeah, if you guys have an idea how to type that in that darn thing, let me know, okay? I thought it would be as easy. Maybe it's touch screen. <laughs> Dream on. And then we can turn this off for immersion because that kind of takes away from the immersive old school feel by just turning off the intercom like this. So everything is now perfectly authentic. Okay, so landing gear after 300 feet, retract the flaps, and then 90 knots would be the great climb speed. Ah, we need the fuel pump to be on. Okay, so this is one of those planes which require the fuel pump to be on, or it's uh, advised to have the fuel pump on during takeoff. Okay, good. 
We have some autopilot stuff here. Cruise. Reduce the throttle to obtain 23 inches of uh, set mercury on the manifold pressure. And then reduce the propeller lever to obtain 2200 on the tachometer. Okay, so 2200 is a typical cruise power setting. Okay, that looks good. Alright, let's, let's do this. Wing it. I'll need a little nav map here on my side so I know where we're going. Uh, taxi would be on the back left. Okay, I'll figure it out. Do we have some lights already? Not really, huh? Let's open the lights here. Some anti-collision lights maybe. And landing lights, fuel pump, let's turn on as well. There you go. It's more like it. Oh, that's beautiful. Usually you have to press the knob under the screen. Knob under the screen. Which one is that? Hey, Alex. <laughs> Oops, you're late. <laughs> you join Jack in the hunting. Let's release the parking brake here. Oh, we're moving already. Taxiing feels nice. Very nice uh, reaction to the rudder control. The fuel pump is very noisy though. And I think I would like some more noise from the engine. They did say that the engine sounds are still work in progress. They're probably tweaking that in. Aircraft engines are very soft though. Yeah, that's because of my volume. So let's put that to 60. There we go. It's more like it. Left you in Africa. <laughs> Had to find your way back. The longest one next to the orange readout. Oh, okay. Let's try it. I'm going to stop here. There's no one on the taxiway anyway. So we'll be making our way straight through there. One second, stop here in the middle. Turn off the fuel pump, it's very noisy. The longest one, which one is it here? Uh, root, maybe if I hold. If I hold one of these guys, something is bound to happen. The dial. The dial. The, this one is the entire GPS thing. Here I think are different avionics packages. This one is for the DME, this one. Hmm. How are you doing, Alex? Okay, let's figure that out later when we get on the air. I guess we'll have to close this now. I guess that will need to be tweaked so that it changes based on changes the engine sounds based on if you have windows open or closed. 051 will be the runway heading so let me plug that in here. Change the heading bug. There we go. The rudder feel is amazing. Very nice. Very easy to taxi. Feels like we're going a bit fast here though. Uh huh. So put our flaps one notch up like so. <laughs> Gets out. <laughs> a simple. How are you? sure not to forget the pitot heat before we go what is the rotation speed good as well good as well quite busy at work but trying to balance things as much as I can regain some sanity back parking brake Leave it there for now. One second. Let me get back to the manual. 
Your pilot doesn't know how to take off. <laughs> One second. We'll get there. 90 knots would be that climb. Uh, 65 knots. Okay, 65 knots would be the rotation speed. Okay, good. Let's see. Excited for the bus. Yeah, definitely. When is the early access start again? Yay! <laughs> Strokes are on. Pito heat is there. No, that's the fuel pump. Pito heat is that one. Okay, good. We need both anyway. Runway 05 here in Glasgow. Looking good. Wash it. Try to maintain center line, right rudder. Oh, that's pretty loud. Woo. There we go, 65. Just leave, let it float bit by bit. There you go. Pass the brake, tap the brakes. Gear up. Oh, nice sounds. The trim is very neutral though. And now it's very loud. <laughs> Good, this is going deaf. Let's go back to 40 first. Let's see, that's enough. Still a bit loud, I think. I'll adjust that later. Okay, 300 feet above. Flaps up. V1 rotate. 25 March, nice. So the trim, is it working? It is working. We have to turn that on though. There's the yoke. There's the yoke. It's been missing. 90 knots is the ideal climb. Let's turn off the boost pump. Let me also tweak the audio. It's still a bit loud, isn't it? I wish you could adjust this on the fly because it kind of breaks immersion when you pause the sim like this. Anyway, at least it's safer. There you go. That's more like it. Good. Held together by Bubblegum and JBL, exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness, Glasgow looks beautiful. Are there no landmarks in here? Because when we went here last week, it was pretty late at night. So we didn't see so much. The controls are a lot more stiff than, than I'm used to. Which is quite nice actually, you really have to trim it. Otherwise, you are in for a very hard workout. I'm pushing on the yoke here a lot. Very nice. The visibility is good though. I like the look of it. Trim down. There you go. Still trying to find the proper level flight here. Thoughts on the bus. Not much yet until I try it, but we'll definitely be trying it out. Yeah, I I learned my lesson trying to judge things before they release. So now we try to wait for the proper time. Let's lower the RPM here, make it a bit more subtle. Uh, 2200 would be the RPM that we want. So just that there. There you go. Looks good. Oh, that looks beautiful. This. this one is the one. Goodness, that would be very nice, just like this sim. Let's have a look from outside. <coughs> wow, I love the bass. The bassy engine sound. Yeah. 
by TML Studios. <laughs> A bolt outside the engine flap. Oh my goodness. Oh, one second. Might get better performance once I do this. There we go. Turned off the preview. Should be a bit smoother. There's the airport we departed from. The controls are very nice actually. It needs a lot more pressure. It, if I were to make an analogy, it feels like it doesn't have power steering in a way. Like you really have to work for it if you want the plane to move. Which is quite nice. It's a good change. One thing I'm not sure of. I have to move to our left here. Let's retain that 1,500 feet. Try to keep it level. Where are we now? And we need little nav map to guide us through. Somewhere along here. Good. And then we'll see if there are any landmarks on the way. In the meantime, I'm sure you're pretty busy with train stuff. What is that yellow light? Can you click it? Oh, that's interesting. It actually has an auto switching kind of thing, I think. Unless I accidentally did something. I think it just switched fuel tanks on me. So let's see. In order to fly level on this plane, I'm looking at the nose. The distance from the horizon to my nose, that's the one. So around that point is the ideal spot. Okay. So we can use, we can fly visually that way. Don't have to rely fully on the instruments. Let's go and explore a bit more in this area. It's too bad, huh? I, I kind of am imagining that there is something here. Also, I can actually let go on the the manifold pressure. 23, I think is what it said. There you go. <clears throat> so we are cruising at a very comfortable speed here. Very economical speed. I guess there would also be a factor about the mixture. But I'd have to learn about that first before I try to lean this one. I imagine there should be some kind of EGT or something. Hmm, interesting. Good. This is the right way though. But yeah, this plane feels so different from the other ones I've, I've been flying. From the Mooney, the Mooney is super sensitive. This one is a lot less so. I might have to tweak the sensitivity slider, but I actually kind of like it in a way. Because even if I, let's see, if I really go extreme on the yoke, I see the yoke moving. And yes, it is changing, but it's not very reactive, which is quite nice. So you have better control on the plane might just be troublesome later when we try and start to to get on well during our flare maybe but it is much easier to fly level and stabilize the plane so i think it's perfect for as a training plane a plane to study and uh, be familiar with some basic flight mechanics plus i don't think you can get any more classic than that also even the autopilot itself is pretty primitive I guess you could say that's the one from what I've been reading the autopilot on this plane is only the lateral movement only the roll the bank so it can guide you to that right heading or follow the nav the waypoints but I don't think you can climb like there is no VS there's only an altitude hold at most I think 
but no VS. So it's up to you to keep yourself level at the right altitude most of the time. Very interesting stuff. But then again, when you're flying a plane like this, I guess it's not really a, a priority to have autopilot on, right? How fast are we flying? 100 knots? More or less? Yeah. Not too shabby. There you go. Getting a bit pushed by the winds here. Feels like we're crabbing, just crabbing just a bit. Just a tad. Taking a trucking break, why? Have you tried 140 beta yet? The lighting is getting even better. <clears throat> when Iberia comes out, yeah. It'll be a short break. I think so. I think so. Let's try to tune in some VORs and see if it's working. Let me see. The nearest one is uh, 117.5. Okay. Let's put that in here. 117.5. Decimal I love the clickiness of the knobs. There we go. You see it changing here. The VOR dial and you also see the DME details. There we are, 26.9 because this one is synced to nav 1. We can say it's synced to nav 2 by using this one. But nav 1 is the setting right now. Cool. So that provides a bit of old school navigation system. Now if the airport we're going to has a VOR, we can do that but I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, fine. So what we can do is we can track directly to that VOR. See how we go. That one. Looks good. Looks like a 2-0 on the heading. Oh, that actually changes, huh? Interesting. <clears throat> Training for a bit. Training for what? <laughs> That's actually how I read it as well in the beginning. How's the audio level, guys? Can you still hear me? You're just mumbling about. I, I read this piece about a, a teacher having his class in Zoom. And he's been talking for like two hours. And then he realized after two hours, he was on mute. And the students didn't even tell him about it. What mean, what mean kids? My goodness. Hey, Aiden. Thanks for following. Welcome to the channel. Are you a flight sim fan as well? <laughs> I'm sure he got that Scotsman. <laughs> he was just in a very trolley mood, I can imagine. So this one... Let me see if I know my old school navigation. So I, I tuned this VOR. Actually, you yeah, can use the instruments here. I can tune this VOR so that we know exactly how to go straight to it but in if I move the course it also changes interesting I think it's one is to one yeah it seems like it it's not like that in the Mooney it's a very refreshing change but yeah this should get us straight onto the VOR so at least in this way it's synced it's actually very user friendly How mean. <laughs> no, you're never trolley. The most serious guy around. <laughs> How's the weather in London right now, Jack? Is it also bad? Because I, I can't use live weather. Looks like it's zero visibility in real life. Oh, this is beautiful. Where are we? It's like a nice city here. Hmm. Kilmarnock? No waypoints though, so far. No landmarks. Let me see if there's something. Okay, there is something right before the VOR. 
Kulzin Kulzin Castle. Yeah, let's let's go ahead there. It looks good. I think that's the castle in front actually. You can see a bit. No, that's actually an airport. The castle is way there. Let's try and do a touch and go here, why not? The the airport is right before us. The runway is right in front of us, so why not try and see how this looks like, how this feels. I guess we can turn off the landing lights. We'll turn it on later again. What's at Wong's website? Yeah, 9am. How about for you? Unban and make mod. Yeah, the mug is actually not working at all right now. It has that black base, so it still has to be modified, even if you manage to copy it out from NL. <laughs> Feelings are broken. Oh no! Ah, row X, I see. Tempered peeps. What do you mean by tempered peeps? Okay, let's start slowing down here. From what I read, we should be slowing down to put the propeller full. Oh, landing gear. Landing gear warning. Interesting. Okay. Let's pull up here. Get a feel for this plane. Because we need to be at 100 knots. 100 knots, there we go. Then we can go flaps 10. We can start lowering the landing gear. Let's have a look outside. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful, actually. Let's take a photo there. Turn on our landing lights. I'm guessing boost pump is needed as well. But in this plane, you really need to trim. Because if you just use the yoke, you'll not get anywhere. Oh my goodness. Lots of trimming power needed. There we go, 80 knots. 85, I think, is when we can actually lower that i think 75 knots is our approach speed more or less there you go a bit high but that's fine we'll make it work there you go looks good so far we're a bit crap because of the wind but should be okay Mixing the throttle a bit. Looking good so far. I think I'm a bit slow actually. There you go. Having a bit of a difficult time. With the plane at the moment. Feels very different. Very, very different. But not in a bad way. This might actually be how it should feel like. You really feel like you're pushing on something. It's not super sensitive. Very nice. Good so far. Happy lights too too. I did right straight, straight for the touchdown zone. Not even sure what runway this is, but we'll make it work. Crash 
crabbing intensifies. Interesting. There you go. Let's see how it feels. Try and flare this thing. I think you'll need a lot of power. Very nice. Okay, good. All right, off we go. Touch and go. 65 knots. Beautiful. I love the handling of this plane. It's so friendly and so realistic feeling. <laughs> Goodness, you really have to work for it to move. Tap the brakes gear up. Very nice. Canadian tour win. Didn't we have that already? <laughs> Very nice. I like it. Okay. Claps. Going up. Spanner is rusty from tears. <laughs> Turn off the boost pump and the fuel, the landing lights rather. Continue climbing at 90 knots here. Let's pull back a little. See where's the view are. Let me try something guys. Uh, let me see if this changes a bit. If we go to the controls here, I did make a new preset for the Piper Arrow. If you look at the sensitivity, because it's at negative 50 for the Mooney, but I think it's a very different feel for this plane. So maybe if you make this something like 25, 26, that might actually be a lot better. Let's see. Something like that. Yeah. Let's see how that works. A little bit more sensitive, but not overly so. This might actually be the right balance of it. Let's see. 1,000 feet, trim it out. Pull back on the throttle so that we're at 23 inches of manifold pressure. And the RPMs lower that to 2200 for a comfortable cruise. There you go. I'll not bother with the leaning of the mixture for now. Hey, Panda! How's the trucking going? Loving the screenshots. Ooh, what's that? I wonder if that's how it looks in real life. Looks like a mall or something. Okay, so we can hug the coast here. We can enjoy the view of the coast. And we can circle around it. Because as we go around, we should be finding a, a nice castle on the way. And as I get used to this plane, you can start really going for IFR kind of flying. I follow roads kind of flying bit more visual which is perfect for this kind of plane I think <clears throat> very nice the engine sounds mm, I'm not a huge fan at the moment it does sound realistic I guess I'm just not sure I like the mixing as much yet but we'll see they did say that part is still the work in progress stuff, tweaking the sounds. I do love the exterior sound, this one. Let's take a photo there, it's lovely. Inside, when you hear a bit of the wind passing through, I guess that's pretty realistic, but I just like the, the bassiness of the exterior sound, and it's not overly screaming at you. So I like that better. One sec, I'm not flying coordinated here. There you go. Let go off the rudder. Very nice. Now 
where is that castle? And we'll hear the lady again in a bit. How do we get to the VOR? Okay, let's see. Sounds like an Iveco. Have you guys tried the Iveco from Krishbom? I must admit I haven't changed trucks yet. I'm still stuck with the Scania 4 series. I'm super loving it. Oh, this guy even has a timer in here. Let's see, mode. Start, stop. I love the clickiness of the interior sounds. This is going to be perfect for doing holds. Needing to time your legs. Stop, reset. Okay. 9.22 I think is the local time. Either that or the UTC. Which in this case is the same thing. Where we are right now. <laughs> Crap, Peko. Castle should be coming up on our left soon. Should be right there, I think. Once this coast goes inland, that should be on the edge, I think. Or somewhere here, based on the map. Double ban. <laughs> so what have you guys been playing recently? Oh, there's also something nice that I saw from the videos. Oh yeah, this one. You can't quite see it. Oh, there it is. But yeah, L later on, let's do a nighttime flight again because that red light like so is going to be perfect for night flying. I see that a lot in like videos in YouTube when, when people are flying GA planes and they're flying at night. They oftentimes have that like red light, which I think is very useful for illuminating the cockpit but at the same time it doesn't ruin your night vision so you still can get to peek outside and see how it looks without uh, yeah, losing that you get like a, a good balance of both so I think that red interior light is very practical Yoke and Throttle Quadrant looks like your side tech yoke. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe it was based on this one. It's the Piper Arrow is a very, very famous plane, right? I think it's one of the competitors of the Cessna 172. I think this is the castle. Not sure if it's shown though. I don't see any landmarks popping up. Yeah, I think there is a landmark here in Bush Talk Radio, but not in the sim. Because if you look here, that's just normal buildings. Kulzine Castle is a castle overlooking the Firth of Clyde, near Mabel, Carrick, on the Ayrshire coast of Scotland. It is the former home of the Marquis of Ailsa, the chief of Clan Kennedy, but is now owned be by one. the National Trust for Scotland. The Clifftop Castle lies within the Kulzine Castle Country Park and is open to the public. From 1972 through 2015, an illustration of the castle was featured on the reverse side of five pound notes hey, issued by the Royal Bank of Scotland. Thank you for As four of months, 2021, man. The castle was available for rent. The armory contains a propeller from a plane flown by Leif Robinson when he shot down a German airship north of London in 1916. To the north of the castle is a bay containing the gas house, which provided town gas for the castle up until 1940. This group of buildings consists of the gas manager's house, the retort house, and the remains of the gasometer. There are sea caves beneath the castle which are currently not open generally, but are open for tours throughout the summer. The castle grounds include a walled garden, which is built on the site of the home of a former slave owned by the Kennedy family, Scipio Kennedy. The castle is reputed to be home to at least seven ghosts, including a piper and a servant girl. Ghost? Did they say ghost? <laughs> like Casper and stuff? Oh my goodness. Stay away from that. <laughs> Call Jack, hurry. Okay, so the VOR should be right here. Seven of them. My goodness. No, thank you. Going away. Oh, yeah, maybe it's goats. I hope they said goats, not ghost. <laughs> Shivering right now. 
know how much of a scaredy cat I am. There's the VR, just flew over it. Oh, that's beautiful, my goodness. The VR should have been somewhere there. I'm not sure if you can see it visually though. Not even sure how it would look like. But okay. Alright, so we are going to Echo Golf uh, Uniform Zulu, which is somewhere near us. If you can head to 201. Okay. Let's just untune that. 201 would be this one. Okay. And I think we need to climb here a bit. Let's see, yeah, it is changing automatically, huh? The fuel tanks. Nice. Let's have a look at the fuel levels. Still almost pretty much in the middle. No problem there. Even in fuel mix full rich here. Not really tweaking the settings yet. Doesn't feel like it chugs fuel. That should be a minimal issue, I think. Minimal concern. But it would be nice if I could lean it. I'm just not sure how. I'll have to read through the... I'll have to read through the thing, the manual, if it's there somewhere. Look at the oil pressure just fiddling in there. I like that level of detail. Very subtle. But those kinds of things where not everything is perfect and some things are kind of finicky makes it super old school sounding very nice snow runner bye <laughs> yes <laughs> probably we'll see <laughs> gyro suction thousand feet getting close to the ground that's okay make it work somehow but yeah we can start actually following roads now if we can how do we get here okay I see a road let's do that I think I need to climb higher though we'll see because there is a road on the coast and if we follow that road a 77 we should actually lead into the yeah that should actually lead into the uh, the airport so we can follow that but one second cuisine castle okay that's the one that we flew on and that was the one that didn't have any visuals in there it's fine maybe not ideal to fly through a wind turbine like this it's fine we'll make it work <clears throat> flying through the windmills rather yeah <laughs> right in the middle to a barrel roll is that next <laughs> now we can fly in between at least so let's look for the road guys help me look out for a77 should be right in front of us. I think it's that one. I think so. That road. I love the bassy sound of the exterior really. So good. Might be this one. Or this one. Let me zoom in and see. No, it's actually farther. Yeah, this one is a smaller road. There's a more mean road right really on the coast. Okay, so we can just follow the coast then. That would be easier. So follow the coast all throughout. And it should lead into like a, a loch, I think. Loch Ryan. Yeah, and then we go straight through from there. That seems good enough. Okay. And we should see the airport from there. Okay. So in order to not cheat, let me minimize the little nav map. Let, let me minimize all the, the maps. And let's fly this visually. Let's see if we can find this on our own, right? See if we can avoid cheating. So just follow the coast all throughout. That, there's the road I'm looking for. That's a beautiful view, huh? 
What ocean is this, guys? Atlantic? Is it? Or is that more of a... Let, let me have one last look of the map. I guess... Kind of, although you do have Ireland still to the west. Close enough. Okay, good. Man, I love how stable this plane is though. It's not the fastest. But it is super stable. Just flies level, look at that. Amazing. Black Sea. <laughs> Close enough, huh? Close enough to the Black Sea. Can we fly like 500 feet instead of a thousand feet? A bit closer to the ground, a bit closer to the action. That might actually be a bit more interesting. Let's try and pull back on the throttle here so we get a bit of descent going. Yeah, you can see the road clearly from here. Also, if you're lower in altitude, actually makes things feel faster right have you be ever been here to this side jack or is this too far from you <clears throat> there we go 500 feet can we go lower maybe 300 feet No idea where you are. <laughs> well, we're south of Glasgow. <laughs> That's the best I can offer. 300 feet, there you go. From here, push on the throttle again. Around 22, 23 inches. And level off. Perfect. So we're a bit closer to the action here. A bit more immersive. Uh, looks like the road is getting overflown at some areas. <laughs> Flooding. That might not be very nice. Two fifty feet now. <clears throat> yeah. I like this plane though. Gives you the full vibes of the GA treatment. Yeah, it handles very well. It makes you work for it. One of the views I like in particular are these ones. Where you look outside the window. Like that. So nice. It just feels so real. I love it. In initially, when I saw a video of this plane before, I thought that the textures were not too good looking. But actually, it's not bad at all, right? I mean, the wear and tear is there, but that's part of the appeal. But it's not really low, low quality. Which actually is pretty good. Even the reflections, the subtle reflections of this material. What do you call that? Uh, it's the same thing that you have in cars, right? Kind of plasticky thing. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, there's a truck there. Which did, just did a magic U-turn. <laughs> Going past Blackpool, you've been there. Blackpool, Pleasure Beach. Okay, let me have a look at the map. Actually, you know what? Let's have a look at the map together. After all, we're flying a bit more stable in here. That's what we are. Hugging the coast here. Where we are, rather. We're actually, no, we we're quite far from Blackpool. Still quite far. We are actually closer to Ireland here. Interesting. At least the Northern Ireland. Steam gauges, yes. <laughs> Why do they call it steam gauges? Hmm. 
like the steam gauges exactly yes definitely the old school feels it's even more old school than the Mooney the Mooney has those digital panels right which is quite nice as well with a bit of balance but this is even more old school than that especially when you use this kind of GPS which I don't even know how to punch <laughs> waypoints into <laughs> my goodness elevation of the airport that we are going to is going to be 82 feet so actually this is not a bad altitude to approach in might be a bit low but you can manage I think since they are actually mechanical yeah hmm. was there a time when they were really steam gauges like I don't know powered by steam or moved by steam maybe during the time of the steam train and maybe since it looked like that they just called them steam gauges all throughout even if the underlying infrastructure changed already <laughs> interesting Oh, by the way, you guys noticed something new? Something new with the... Hmm, what hint can I give? Not in the game. <laughs> can only assume it's a reference to their age, and those aren't old. <laughs> yeah, I can get behind that. Mainly used for steam trains to measure the steam and then they stuck on. Yeah, that would make sense. New pop filter. Uh, the pop filter is old, but very close. Very close, physically speaking. <laughs> it's hard to notice, I think, especially with a small cam. Coastal <clears throat> tour. I like it. There's a bit of that landscape weirdness though, huh? Like the the terrain is changing a bit. Like the LOD is not fairly seamless. So when the model switch, you kind of make it obvious. Nose job. Oh yes, you noticed. <laughs> it's a new cap. It's a new cap. It looks the same though, but it feels different. Let me let me show you better that one. It's still black though. I I was actually surprised Mrs. Clumsy let me buy it because we were in a mall one day. Uh, where were we? But I, I I came with her for some errands, so I went with her and we went to a mall afterwards. We went to this uh, to the store and I found a cap which was black, which was had minimal design and was was symmetrical. I like the Under Armour logo because it's symmetrical left and right. And if I put the track IR thing right in the middle, it it perfectly bisects the logo. So everything is still symmetrical even if on either side. So if I decide to like flip the mirror mirror the webcam at some point, it would still look nice. And the shape is actually better than the older one. <laughs> Yeah, I finally got a chance to switch caps. I think that cap I had before was like, I don't know how many years that is, three years old, two years old. It's been a while. They call this a golf cap, I'm not sure why. Looks like any other cap to me. Okay, so I think this is like the the Lock, lock Ryan, um, like an inlet kind of thing so it goes inland and then goes out again if you trace it back there but if we continue this path the airport should be straight ahead let's see if we can find it hoping for a cowboy hat oh my goodness that might not end well don't think i can pull that off pull off that look a bit through here floor it so we can climb a bit climb back to a thousand feet I think we've had enough 
fun in low altitudes. Hey, thanks for following. Welcome to the channel. Feel free to join chat so we can greet you by name. Or lurk away, more than welcome. We are climbing. Just very slowly. Maybe increase the RPMs a bit. Oh, you really feel it, huh? Really hear it and feel it. The performance difference of that one. It's like doubled our climb rate. There you go. What I don't like so much is the yoke is actually blocking the RPM. So I have to like look over like there just for a second to get the proper RPM value. Which is not a big deal but it's one thing that maybe I need to angle myself out of. It's more uh, of a layout of the aircraft than the, the modeling by the developers. was dangerous to wear them on London buses. Spurs are those the like the stars on the back of the boots? What are those used for anyway? I guess for horses, huh? Now the airport, I'm not sure where. Okay, it looks like the, the fuel tank switched. Going down the stairs was 50-50. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay, so the airport should be somewhere here. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. Sound mod used here. This one? Well, the, the, the entire plane is a mod. And yes, the sounds are custom. Yeah, I absolutely love the sound here. The exterior. So good. Normally, the exterior views I try to minimize because it's too loud for most of the planes. But here, I actually am encouraged to go more into exterior review because of how, how nice the sounds are, how bassy they are. Uh, see any airports anyway? Anywhere? I think I'll have to ask the help of Little Nav not to navigate. That looks like an airport. Maybe. Let's see. Also depends what kind of airport this is. I think it's a small airfield, so probably won't have those fancy lights. Let's see. No, it doesn't look like the one I'm looking for. I guess we can land near a farm somewhere, but ideally, let's have a look at the map. Yeah, we are way off course here. Should have gone straight past that uh, like lake and there should be something here. Also, I should be 26 here. Runway 26 based on the winds. Okay, so let's do a U-turn. Around the 080 heading maybe. Something like that, pull up a bit, there you go. <clears throat> no worries Panda, glad you made it. Yeah, sound mods are existent as well in Flight Sim. They're not as needed because oftentimes the sounds on the planes are good already but there are some which improve them even more it's not so often though more often than not the the, the custom planes either payware or freeware have nice sounds built in and even the default planes have very good sounds I would say <clears throat> okay let's see where that is 
Carnaby Street by Soho. Oh, that wasn't a joke. That was real. <laughs> I thought they were just role-playing there for a second. Okay, it's getting a bit dark here in the cockpit. Let's see if the red lights here would help a bit. Might be a bit excessive. Kind of nice though, isn't it? Like that. Would be even more perfect at night, I think. Let's try that out later. Also, we have some lighting here, which we can actually change. Yeah, that's a bit more visible. There you go. Okay, 080 on the heading. Oh, there's the airport. Okay, downwind of the airport. That's the one. Okay, let's slow down here. 100 knots is perfect, actually. Pull back on the throttle here. Might be a bit too close to the airport. 08, so 26 would be the runway we'll be landing in. Let me put that in the heading bug just so I have a visual. Okay, 100 knots. First notch of flaps. Slowing down even more. Let's get our space from there first though. Leather pads! Oh, didn't know Jack was such a fashionista. Cowboy boots would be interesting, huh? Okay, let's lower the landing gear here. Landing lights. Boost pump on. Propeller mixture full. Just in case we need to go around. That should be okay, I think. Stern base here. Space. Okay. There's a hill. Turning final. Ooh. Might not be the best approach for this one. There it is. Straighten it out. Flaps. Full. I'm actually not sure if there's like damage modeled in, like if you extend your flaps when it's um, when you have too high speeds or extend your landing gear if they'll get damaged. I'm not sure if that level of simulation is in. Okay, looks good. I hope this is the right airport. Very stable. Hold it down. Did that actually bounce? I thought that was going to be a smooth one. Huh, interesting. Maybe I should have pulled more. A bit more on the a bit more on the flare, I guess. Very interesting. Okay, let's do a back taxi here. Easy peasy. Yeah, the weather is fair, so not such a problem. Let's get on the grass here. This plane should be able to take off some some beating on the off-road path. And the boost pump is loud, huh? 
Alright, where are we off to next? Let's have a look. Carlisle. Echo Golf November Charlie. Sweetheart Abby. Okay. Shall we try and figure out that GPS kind of thing again? Let's see. Let's turn off the boost pump for now. Oh, that was noisy, my goodness. Can we, can we take off without that? It's not something I'm really fond of. I don't know it's needed, but maybe we'll do fine without it for the sake of my ear stability. Paper plane, yes, it's going to be. It's not yet released. So I actually got this as early access from Just Flight. Thanks to Just Flight for providing an early access copy for me, so I'm previewing it. There's no release date yet and no uh, price yet, but it should be soon. Soon, TM. <clears throat> so let's taxi to the beginning. The weather is really amazing, that's true. Hey, Gamaste, how are you? Let's see what the live weather has in store for us. If it will even load. Nah, it's bugged. Crap. Okay, fine. That will work just fine. Okay. And the squeaking of the, the cabin as I tap on the brakes. Try to maneuver my plane around. Okay, let's stop here. Let's uh, step out of the runway for a bit. Turn off the pitot heat. Turn off the landing lights. We'll get it back later. But for now, we'll have to plan our route. Okay. Maybe open the window a bit for fresh air. Okay, so... Let's just double checking that it's off. So that's our route. Where are we going? We start from here. And then we go to Carlisle. Echo Golf November Charlie, if I remember correctly, that's the one. Yeah. Now, in terms of landmarks, we can follow the coast again, but I think it's going to be a bit too... Well, I guess that can work, but I'd like to follow something more exciting if possible. A75 looks like a nice one. A75, following it off the coast, branching off. And then Dumfries, ooh. And then going forward all the way through and then Carlisle should be there and then the airport itself should be right beyond that just head to the east all throughout let's see if we can find it so after we take off from runway 26 I'll uh, make a u-turn left turn try and look for a75 here and we'll follow it the rest of the way through now should we try to do this at night let's just try it out how it would look like it would look very dark <laughs> I do love the submarine feels of this red light though very nice yeah might not be the best for this countryside um, vibe though let's go with that kind of lighting looks good all right it's so, so hard to believe that you have clear skies. Yes. <laughs> the night is dark. Who knew? That's something new. Get back in here. Get those in. Fine. Let's have the boost bump in there. Two six is the runway heading. Let's try and keep that. Sixty-five knots. Pull. It's a very subtle climber. You're up. 
Very nice. Slaps up. And you have that behavior that when you extend the flaps, the nose lifts up. And when you retract the flaps, the nose falls down. Very nice. Okay, turn off the boost pump and the landing lights. Yeah, Vito Heat, let's keep that on to be on the safe side. Beautiful. So we turn to the left and let's look for the road. This time though, I think I'll get the aid of Little Nav Map here just so I have a bit more guidance on where the road exactly is. 90 knots, there we go. Manifold pressure going down, RPM going down. 2200, there you go. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. The handling of this plane, so nice. Very beginner friendly, I would say. <clears throat> Very subtle movements. Now where is the road? The road should be right below us. It's the airport. It's the road guys. I think it's this one. Yeah, this one. Okay, we have a few visuals on it. We can see the cars from below. I think that helps a bit. Looks good. Not many lights in there though, so I think we'll just end up following the coast anyway. But my goodness, look at that view. <sighs> just stare at that the whole day. Hey Gunny! Cockpit brings back memories. Did you fly one of these before? IRL Piper Arrow 3. One of the famous planes out there, huh? Is it a direct competitor of the Cessna 172? I think so. I think when you're starting to learn how to fly, it's either the Cessna, the 172, or this one would be the most common things you would be flying. <clears throat> this is perfect for the UK tour though. Love the vibes. Such a beautiful view. And yes, performance is great because you don't have any glass cockpits. Actually, my GPU is stuck at 66%, 70%, and this is while streaming already. Streaming and recording at the same time. So something else is holding me back. In terms of performance, I guess we're at around 40 plus. Oh, 32 actually, yeah, that's pretty low. Look at that. But something around the area, I think, is holding us back. The scenery, more likely. <clears throat> With flight sim, you never know <laughs> what FPS you'll be getting. Okay, that's the road we're following. Not the biggest road to follow, but I like seeing those bridges, so we'll continue with that. And that's nice. <clears throat> hey, Raven. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Thanks, man. Let's try and tune into some VORs. I love tuning into VORs with these old school uh, avionics systems. Um, if I can find one, that is. Does Carlyle have one? It does have something an NDB. Hmm, we can try tuning into that. 328 would be the frequency. We do have an NDB here. One second. I lost the road though. We'll, we'll, we'll just head east. I think that should be good enough for now. We'll follow the roads later on. But for now, let's go and explore the systems. Yeah, head east perfect like that. Nice. Fly level. Beautiful. 
So, if I go through here, and it would be an 8, 9, or 6, was it? One sec. No, so far away. 3, 2, 8. Now, does that really... I guess there should be a needle somewhere. This one would be nav 2. I'm not sure actually where to see that. Huh. I'll have to read up on the manual how to reflect that in the needles. <clears throat> sure thing. Thanks for joining the stream. What are you busy with these days? What have you guys been up to? <clears throat> Myself, I have been enjoying non-stop the Scania 4 series. Oh, this is nice! Oh, wow! You can actually use that! Sunshield, very nice textures there. The reflections are beautiful and very practical, especially with this one. It's a bit blinding, right? Put that in. Oh, so cool! Very nice attention to detail right there <clears throat> can you move that somewhere I think that's the extent you can't move it to the left like here no I think that's it cool There's also some autopilot stuff here, which I am a bit scared to use, but we'll try it for the sake of science. So if I go and check it out, roll would be neutral. Uh, okay. Here we have heading selected. Okay, heading is selected. And then... Let's make sure we fly level first. And then I can turn on the... Uh, I'm not sure what the sequence is. We actually have our windows open. No one saw that. <laughs> no wonder there was so much fresh air coming in. I wonder if that affects performance, if we're slowing down because of that. Okay. Right, heading is on, let's say. And let's say autopilot on. Oh, it is working. Yeah, look at that. If I move my heading bug to the right now, the yoke should, uh, it should bank me to the right on its own. That way. Although you can see, the pitch doesn't really have anything in there. So it just continues whatever you have at the moment. Or maybe you have to pitch yourself manually. You can also see here some kind of motor working. Might be something about the autopilot in there. Interesting. There, yeah, you heard it. Like the, the autopilot motor, very. Uh, what's the term? Rudimentary. Very basic stuff. I would not want to use it as much as I can. I think there's also an altitude hold feature, but I'm not sure if that's part of the plane itself or it's something they just added to the simulator so it's easier to use. But it seems like the, the regular autopilot doesn't even have lateral guidance, or vertical rather. Gyroscope. Yeah, it might be. It might be actually. There's an autopilot which just makes you roll to the left or roll to the right. And then you just play in the f when you're on the right course, you just set it to the middle. <laughs> so, it's very different from the usual autopilot that we're familiar with. It does have those basic options as well, heading and nav, but it also has some very basic options like left or right, and then go back to center when you want to fly level. Interesting stuff. I guess at least any kind of automation would help. How are we doing on fuel? Fuel wise, almost 25% on both sides. I do like that, it's automatic. I wonder if there's a switch for it that makes it automatic or manual. It's like in the TBM, there's a switch which makes it 
like, I think it switches every, I don't know, 15 minutes or so if you have it on. I would guess it's the same logic here. Just timer based. <clears throat> it works though, it works. Have a look at the charts here. Performance chart, operating data manual. I do want to see 2200 RPM. Okay, economy cruise page 16. Okay, what is this saying? It's saying at a thousand feet pressure altitude. Uh, Peak EGT? Yeah, where do you see the EGT? That might be something we can explore. Cruise RPM is 2200. Fuel flow is 8.5 gallons per hour. Is that maybe what we should be targeting? 8.5 gallons per hour is... Uh, I guess that's this one around here. Fuel flow, 8.5 gallons per hour somewhere here. Hmm. Yeah, might be something I can look into in the manual. <clears throat> There's a checklist. Oh, yeah, that's also one thing I can check if, like, the checklist is uh, available. Uh, it doesn't it's not in here it's not coded in i'm not sure if they're planning to add that but it is in the manual there is a checklist in the manual it's just not in the sim itself i hope they really consider use of the mixture control in cruising flight reduces fuel consumption significantly especially at higher altitudes okay mixture mixture should be lean during cruising operation when 75 percent power or less is being used okay Uh, they didn't really say anything about how though, like what to look at. Look at some more. Yeah, I'll have to look later on. Have a good night, Jack. Thank you. A few times, but they're not rated for constant speed prop. Considered high performance. Ah, I see. Cool. Have a good night, Jack. Catch you later. Catch you in SnowRunner. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for dropping by. So we can lean the mixture a bit. That should change the fuel flow in here. Something like that would be 8.5. That would follow what we say, what it says in the manual. But I would want to verify that via EGT or CHT, whichever is available. Let's have a look if there are any such cages in here. No acrobatic maneuvers, including spins approved. Yeah. So, what is this one? ADF, ah, okay. So that's where the ADF. So that's probably where the needle is. Is it? It's not going to turn so much though. Okay, anyway. So. Um, let's see. I don't see any oil temperature, oil pressure, but there is no engine temperature, exhaust gas temperature, or cylinder head temperature. Okay, then we'll just base it on fuel flow, I guess. That should be fine enough. Just listen to it until it sputters, maybe. 
there should actually be a lock here as well on the mixture I think there is a lock I'm not sure if it's implemented in here that you shouldn't be allowed to go lower than 40 percent just testing something guys for science yeah that probably doesn't work yeah let's leave it like that there's a lock here supposedly that might be one that's the one but it still allows me to go below 40 that should lock it for a yeah, toggle mixture lock anyway make that work top right of the mixture right at the bottom hey hob thanks for joining thanks for the tip as well let's see to the right of the mixture right at the bottom oh that one there thank you thank you yes exactly i missed that good call hey espn thanks for joining and thanks for that detail mixture locks provided right with the lock engaged the mixture level cannot be moved below approximately 40 percent yes that's what i understood as well so right now we're at 50 i'm not really sure if this means the that which one is locked is it that one i guess so that should prevent us from going below 40 but i still can right now we're at how much is this 19 I can try the other way um, one second that one see if that goes lower yeah both of them allow me to go lower so maybe if you have a mixture knob in your throttle it, it doesn't allow doesn't lock that properly might have to tweak that a bit okay EGT I see it's moving there moving very fast actually so if you go full mixture here full rich let's go to 1000 feet again let's go back there <clears throat> come on go back to 1000 and then i can lean the mixture bit by bit maybe hide that yoke As I lean the mixture, you can see the EGT rising. There's the peak, and then that's the lean of peak. It's just a tad lean of peak. Cool. We can work with that. But what I cannot work with is going through this mountain right here. Okay, let's let's fly this properly. <clears throat> so that ends us up somewhere in. 56 percent okay that looks good yeah i hope so too the textures are very nice aren't they the wear and tear is just amazing great concept like you look at the yoke here it's barely anything in there left <laughs> it's so bare <laughs> and the, the the combs all turning them on turning them off my goodness the plane handling is so different as well from the other planes that I've flown. It's very subtle movements, nothing finicky. No sudden movements here. Very nice. There is also an option for, I was telling the guys about this, there's an op option for clean textures, no wear and tear. You just have to modify some textures, some files, but they provide the files for it, the textures that are clean that are perfect so that can be a possible thing for those who are not fond of the wear and tear thumb stuff I think that would be rare though I think most of the time people would be very interested in it would like that appeal oh and by the way for those who just joined maybe someone knows does anyone know how the heck you program this thing 
Because I'm trying to go and plan a route. How do you type stuff here? Who didn't type anything? <laughs> that thing is so old school, I don't know how to, to use it. I'm guessing you press something so that the line select would activate or something like that and then you can plug in some values but it's so hard it's too much for my brain and those exterior sounds are beautiful I like it best from behind like this the bass is amazing doesn't seem to respect the tail numbers though if you set a custom tail number it doesn't show I'm not sure if that's going to be implemented but even inside yeah, it does, it's not there maybe they didn't include that feature let's just increase the lights here should give us that subtle red light change the dim here your VFR leave the buttons alone <laughs> but I like fiddling with the buttons that's a good point though speaking of VFR let's go and look for that road again kind of got distracted a while ago uh, should be on our left here well, we can follow a river, or we can just follow the coast, just keep it easy. Just follow it straight through. That should eventually reach uh, close to Carlisle already. So you can just head eastbound like this, continuing. That should be okay. <clears> Hug <throat> the coast. Tail number is probably hard coded in the files. Could be, yeah. Normally, it should be like in flights in 2020 at least. You should be able to put in your tail number in the main menu, right? In the world map. And then when you go into the sim, it should reflect here in other planes. But I think that's a custom feature. Maybe they haven't gone around that yet. I'm not sure if they're planning to. It would be nice though. Really helps you customize your plane easy. No need to modify textures. That's something that I really welcome that feature because I coming from X Plane, the tail number is not a readily modifiable thing. You have to modify the textures to implement it. Or some planes like the TBM 900 I think support it. But it's all very customized, depends on who made the plane. With Flight Sim, they have that kind of feature included or allowed, I guess, but it has to be up to the developers to code that in still to make it compatible. It's beautiful views all over. I changed my mind. I think I want to go through. Let's see, if I find a road here, we'll follow it, but I don't think there's a big enough road to follow from above like this. For those who've flown VFR, maybe Gunny, you have some points for me. What do you usually use as landmarks? I guess having a map is always useful, but really feels great when you're able to fly just visually without any cheats I guess in real life you'd want all the advantage you can get but since we're in the sim we can refuse some of those advantages the coast I guess would be a good starting point 
can't miss that map on lap is the law not a cheat that's good then I don't need to feel guilty about having little lab map at all huh yeah would be great if it's right here a tablet right here but I can work with that So do you guys even still use landmarks or it's just really the map is all you need, I guess. <clears throat> oh, one thing that I didn't see yet, this one, I saw this in the manual. That one is actually the outside air temperature and you literally have like a, I don't know, maybe a thermometer sticking out of the window like that. I love it. <laughs> Very practical stuff. Let's face away from the sun so we can see what it says. That's the, literally the outside air temperature. Let's see if we can read it. That's so hard to read though. Is it 20 plus? Oh, I'm not sure how to read it. I'll have to look into that more. Looks like we're falling as well. Climb back up, please. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, looks like the fuel tank switched. Quarter. No tanks left. Big things like roads, lakes, and urban areas. But you still need a VFR map. Ah, I see. It's fair enough. Seminole has the same outside air temperature instrument. Ah, nice. I didn't have that. I bought the Mooney, but not that one. <clears throat> That's the twin engine from Carinado, right? Let's try and read it again. Maybe if I increase the lights. No, it doesn't I don't think the red lights reach that point so it says here 30 there's like an outer dial and an inner dial the outside air I think that's the temperature but the inside goes from 0 20 40 and here to the right 0 20 40 60 again so I'm not sure what that in inner dial is for Can minimize that I don't think we need it that much there you go oh this is nice okay get back up to a thousand oh and yes I wanted to tune into the in the B I believe ADF328, I think in Carlisle there is an NDB. There's a oh there's a DME as well. Okay, we can use that. 110.7. 110 decimal seven. Yes, let's do that. 110 decimal seven. Might be a bit too far for it though, although it is just a DME, not a VOR. So it should appear here at least. Can we plug that in manually like so? No, it doesn't detect it. Too far, I think. Okay, let's see you later if it changes. Hug the coast. Celsius in Fahrenheit might be, might be. Another update for the Scania sound mod. Nice, Alex. What version is it now? 1.2? Yeah, the, the silent trucking video yesterday actually was a 1.2 beta. 
he gave me access to it so you might hear it a bit more bassy and I think he lessened the bass after that so that might be the version that we're all getting the more refined one 1.2 I see VFR is stopwatch, compass, and map and VORs to confirm yeah the VORs are a nice touch I like that hey Kenny how are you? If you were to start out on VR with a fresh profile, what city would you start in? Um, definitely the 4 series. <laughs> I'm pretty biased about that. City? Oh, that's hard. I would probably pick somewhere in Germany because it's newly rebuilt so it looks good. And it's in the center so it's accessible. Other places are accessible depending on your mood. Are you planning to start a new VR profile? Sounds cool. Nice. Enjoy. We'll be waiting for some stories. So the stopwatch is really important for VFR, huh? In the bush flights that are in part of the the flight sim 2020 package I'm not very fond of them because you can't customize the plane you fly but they are very particular like oh um, head 084 and fly for 1 minute 30 seconds then you should reach your waypoint things like that but I guess you would have to have a constant airspeed in there which we do it's all a matter of calculating it I guess so that can be one thing as well. Although for me personally, I really like the concept of just using the landmarks. It feels so much more uh, natural to me. As raw as it gets. <laughs> as visual as it gets. Need to press enter to start initialization. Oh, the manual is available now. Thank you for the tip, ESPN. Let's have a look. Let's try it out again. So if I say go to, press enter, I can hold it there. Yeah, I tried that a while ago, but it doesn't seem to work. Oh, we can actually see our ground speed in here. Nice. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> head into a mountain. Let's at least try and land. Enjoy, man. Yeah, Carlisle. Squawking 1200. Well, in the UK, I think it's 7,000 for VFR. So I think we might be on the right squawk here. But let me know if that's not the case. <laughs> We have flaps down. Yes, we do. Yeah, all good, all good. As raw as it gets. So everything I think is so well done already. The textures, the audio, the interior cabin sounds, each button, each dial. The sound effects are great. Maybe the engine sounds are just the thing that need more refining. But as it is right now, it's actually great already. Maybe the exterior is just greater. I'm not sure which one is more realistic though, like more close to closer to the real thing. But either way, looks good. Hmm, I think we're headed the wrong way here. Have to head to the east. So I think we have to head that way actually. Yeah, because this river goes somewhere else completely. What is this? River... River Nith. Oh, if you follow the river there upstream, that goes direct to Dumfries. Why does that place sound familiar? I find 
interesting. Is that little nav map is a bit inconsistent with what we see below us. Like, if you look at little nav map, it's saying there is actually land here right below us. But if you look where we are in the sim, no land whatsoever. Mrs. Clumsy lets you out in that dirty plane. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> Don't tell her. Dumb freezes in pro mods. Ah, that's why it rings a bell. That's why it rings a bell. Carlisle. Yeah. Looks familiar here. And then uh, after Kyla, if we head more to the east, that actually leads us back to Newcastle. But uh, we won't reach that far. We've been there before already. So if you know, on, on our tour, this is how it looks. So we've done most of the the legs on the east side of the UK. We've done already. We are now on the west side here. So the next one after Carlisle would be... Oh, wait a minute. There's actually something here. Sweetheart Abbey. We missed that. One second. Let's see if we can still go there. don't see it here might be a different one yeah there is one here maybe we can play it it says Panam flight 103 you guys familiar with that it was a regularly scheduled Panam transatlantic flight from Frankfurt to Detroit via London in New York City I wonder why that is the landmark somewhere to the north there let's play it pan am flight 103 was a regularly scheduled pan transatlantic flight from frankfurt to detroit via london and new york city on the 21st of december 1988 n739 par the aircraft operating the transatlantic leg of the route was destroyed by a bomb killing all 243 passengers and 16 crew in what became known as the Lockerbie bombing. Large sections of the aircraft crashed onto a residential yes. street in Lockerbie, Scotland, uh -huh. killing 11 people on the ground. With a total of 270 people killed, it is the deadliest terrorist attack in the history of the United Kingdom. Following a three-year joint investigation by Dumfries and Galloway Constabulary and the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, arrest warrants were issued for two Libyan nationals in November 1991. In 1999, Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi handed over the two men for trial at Camp Zeist, Netherlands, after protracted negotiations and UN sanctions. In 2001, Abdul Basit al Megrahi, a Libyan intelligence officer, was jailed for life after being found guilty of 270 counts of murder in connection Goodness. with the bombing. In August 2009, he was released by the Scottish government on compassionate grounds after being diagnosed with prostate cancer. He died in May 2012 as the only person to be convicted for the attack. In 2003, Gaddafi accepted responsibility for the Lockerbie bombing and paid compensation to the families of the victims, although he maintained that he had never given the order for the attack. Acceptance of responsibility was part of a series of requirements laid out by a UN resolution in order for sanctions against Libya to be lifted. Libya said it had to accept responsibility due to Megrahi's status as a government employee. During the Libyan civil war in 2011, Former Minister of Justice Mustafa Abdul Jalil claimed that the Libyan leader had personally ordered the bombing, though this was later denied, while investigators have long believed that Megrahi did not act alone, and have been reported as questioning retired Stasi agents about a possible role in the attack. Some relatives of the dead, including the Lockerbie campaigner Dr. Jim Swire, believe the bomb was planted at Heathrow Airport and not sent via feeder flights from Malta, as the US and UK claim. A cell belonging to the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine had been operating in West Germany in the months before the Pan Am bombing. 
Oh, goodness, that was heavy. Didn't expect that. No wonder. So, yeah, the town of Lockerbie is somewhere up there in the north. If you trace through this river there, I think that would be where it would be. <clears throat> so, let's see. Where are we going? Head straight east past this one. Carlisle should be somewhere on the right. And uh, there should be a VOR, well, the DME. 110 decimal 7, indeed. Still nothing, though. This is open, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it there. Maybe as we get closer, we'll get something out of it. Not a lot of waypoints in this leg, unfortunately. Not as action-packed as the previous ones we had, but at least we have... Thankfully, we have a new plane to test out and try. Keeps things interesting. Very calm winds. Thankfully. Good for starting out. But if we look at live weather here... That would probably be a very different story. Let's have a look how Carlisle is looking like. Uh, I don't think it has an ATIS of its own. Yeah, but the nearest airport... Actually not that bad in terms of winds. No winds, but... What is SG? VV. Let's have a look. There is the weather. Moderate snow grains. The visibility is 0 0.1 nautical mile. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I doubt anybody's taking off <laughs> flying around these parts. Oh my goodness. Yeah, very bad weather right now. The other day, I just, just happened to chance upon checking how the weather is like in the UK. And the other day, it was literally clear. But it seems like that's more of an exception than the rule. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not a very... It's not a very great place for sightseeing with live weather at the moment. Might be the season. Carlisle Castle should be coming up here but i'm not sure if we have uh it's temporarily closed it says hmm. it's a shame yeah i don't think we have a landmark here either but we'll pass through carlisle anyway yeah this plane even without autopilot it's so easy to fly level normally we would have a hard time flying level in this case but here i barely have to touch the yoke I guess the calm winds are helping a lot in there as well, but still, very nice. Should also get our view of the M6 motorway. Somewhere on the left should be, parallel to our direction here. Might be too far yet though. Let's have a look outside again. Oh, let's try if this works. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it removes the glare. So good. Oh, that's a nice added detail. Let's keep that in for now. Clouds are just chilling. I had an opportunity to fly the other day with a CJ4. I was able to go through, go above, go through some clouds. Very nice what they did with the update. Seems like they really removed those grainy clouds that people have been complaining about before. Although for me, honestly, it's not really an issue. The clouds are so great looking already, even if they're grainy at times. I had no qualms about it, but now they even made it, they made it even more beautiful. So 
you look outside, anywhere you look, it's just breathtaking. Very nice. The sound here in this angle is my favorite. Ooh, ASMR ish vibe. Beautiful. Okay, let me loop around here a bit. Carlisle should be coming up on our left. The sun probably won't help much though with the visibility, but we'll make it work. <clears throat> How's the EGT? Yeah, that looks good. Lean of peak. I haven't seen in the manual, I haven't really read it that much as you guys can tell. Um, if they have a recommendation on cruise, like if you, if it's ideal because it depends on the plane, right? Some would prefer reach of peak, some would prefer lean of peak. But I think in general, if it works for the plane, lean of peak will be very economical at the cost of some power, some speed. How's our fuel? One fourth, okay. Very long uh, flight time here for this plane. That's the fuel tank switching automatically. This is Carlisle already, guys. Let's see if we can find the castle in here. I have my doubts it's modeled in though. Oh, by the way, they added the, the... I'm actually flying with the recent version of Flight Sim. 113.17 was previously 113.16. They introduced the flaps hotfix in this mode. I'm just not sure if, it, if this plane in particular, the Piper Arrow 3 by Just Flight, is compatible or which flap setting it's more designed for. Does it have that flaps workaround for the bug or not? Or maybe it's not affected at all. But so far from how we've flown it, it doesn't seem like an issue. It is quite nice actually. Very sturdy. Okay, looks good. Yeah, I don't think we'll find the castle in here. Let's look outside. No landmarks, but the place itself. I love seeing different layouts like this. Oh, without having to do anything extra. Still, I still can't wrap my head around it. Before, you would need to go through hoops just to make replicate this kind of behavior. Let's remove that. Download some ortho photos. Eat up like hard of your heart, half of your hard drive space. Filling it with ortho photos, removing clouds manually from those satellite images and stuff like that. And still, you wouldn't get it as beautiful as this one. Here, everything is just automatic. I think that might be the motorway. This might be it, yeah. M6. Definitely recovery, definitely. It's perfect for lazy guys like me who just want to fly. Don't want all that prep work. Downloading stuff, tweaking stuff. Just load the sim up. Press fly. Yeah. Now that can definitely be a landmark, huh? That's very visible from up here. Motorway is definitely a good way to navigate. Now the airport should be somewhere on our right to the east. There should be a road that branches out. I think it's that bridge. So that road should branch out to the east. Should eventually lead to the airport somewhere. Oh, that's that's the one. That's the one. There you go. How are the winds looking like? I think we can look at the winds using this one if you turn the EFB. Uh, yeah, we can see the crosswind, headwind component. 
Right, so I think it's still better we come from the other side. Okay, I can work with that. We'll also look at it from below. We'll fly over the airport and see how it's looking like. Where is it? I lost it. Let's have a look outside. Mista! How are you doing, man? How are things there? Where the heck is the airport? I saw it already. Well, I guess I missed it. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it now. So let's join left downwind of runway. What's the runway here? 24. Okay, I can work with that. Runway 24 it is. So just the heading bug, so I have an idea where that should be. There you go. Beautiful. Complete approach. Papi lights on this side of the runway. On the other side, I think there is less of that. But we should be able to manage. You know, the visuals are good. Right. Start slowing down here to 100 knots. Keep it level at 1000 feet. Pulling on the throttle, pulling up the yoke. 100 knots, there we go. First notch of laps going down. Push forward on the yoke to counteract that pitching up tendency. Looking good so far. Keep it level. Lower the landing gear, get some drag in. The UK is so flat. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of hills in here. There are some right there, but yeah, not much. We mostly flew a thousand feet and we hardly got into any trouble. The sounds actually changed. can hear the air coming through the landing gear well I think that's the runway right there it's hard to see there it is okay. let's turn base here very slowly hey Machek yes Thankfully. <laughs> How are you? Are you also looking forward to this plane? I'm very excited with this plane. Thanks to Just Flight for allowing me to check it out a bit in advance. I'll let you guys know when I get more details on it. Okay. Full flaps, landing lights, boost pump, full prop, full mixture. Turn final in here. Overshooting it a bit, that's fine. We'll make it through. There we go. That high? Oh, apparently we we also have full approach happy lights on this side okay. looking good let's see if we can get the hang of this landing again very different feel of the aircraft I like it feels very solid very stable Little bit of left rudder, go to throttle idle and try and delay that, flare it out. There we go. 
Oh, the rudder control is getting out of whack. There we go. Whew. Very nice. Claps up. Boost pump can go off. It's very noisy boost pump. Just goes through here all the way to the ramp. I love the squeaking sounds here. Pito heat off. Landing light I guess can go off. Since X plane 11 you miss this plane so much. Right. Yeah, this is actually the first time I've flown the arrow. I haven't flown it in X plane. So unfortunately I don't have the best comparison but comparing it with the planes I've flown here feels very different, feels very solid this one doesn't have sensitive controls almost like there is no power steering if I put it under analogy for a car which is something I like though you really have to move your yoke to make it react it's not super responsive it's not overly responsive and even the taxiing the rudder controls for taxiing very stable feeling and nobody done with this I guess we can open this one, right? Get in some air. That's what I would want to see. Like in the Carinado and the Mooney, when you open the window here, you really hear that engine sound getting louder. So there is that sense that you really opened something. I think it would benefit the plane's immersion if they could model it something like that as well. a spark through here that should be good enough nice is that open the entire time are we losing oil here because that thing is open well no one no one saw anything <laughs> no one saw nothing okay Oh my goodness, that's a wreck. So how do we close this down? So that, there are no more lights. Differential brake, yeah, I used it a bit. Just for a sharper turn. And here you have to turn off each and every avionics there. What is moving? Bouncing. Turn them off. How do you turn that thing off? Turn it off here. That one as well. There. There's a switch. There you go. Okay. Now everything is off. good okay I think that's good very nice some very squeaky throttles here though that's because of my dead zones they're very shaky you can see I think even the that actually might be from the rudder I'm not sure something uh, the magnetos probably want to turn that off there we go oh and it automatically turns off nice can't wait when you're 38 you'll finally arrive oh yes you'll enjoy it you'll love it hopefully by that time as well the uh, performance of the sim is improved even more How are you still awake? I know, right? Spooling down sounds. Open the door. Ah, there it is. Very good. 
well, nice looking plane, perfect GA vibes. Let's see how much it will cost when we see how it looks. Track IR5, I think it is. Raz, welcome to the stream. Yes, exactly. There's an aviation museum here in Carlisle. Oh, perfect. Oh, look at that. Nice parking that we did. Not too bad, huh? Pretty much aligned. <clears throat> how are you doing, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're ending the stream a bit early because it will be a bit middle of nowhere if I start a flight here. Didn't time that perfectly well this time. Anyway, we'll make up for it next time. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Hope you enjoy the chill vibes. I'll catch you on Friday for some trucking. In the meantime, Discord is where we can all meet up. Exclamation point Discord gets you there. Awesome. No worries, Jay. Good luck with whatever you're doing. Catch everybody soon. Have a good flight. Have a good time. Clumsy flying and stay safe. Catch you guys on Friday. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. My pleasure.